Well, I'm excited about tonight. Uh, tonight is our uh, Rosh Kadesh, which is the head of the month service. But because we have just crossed over into a new year on the Hebraic calendar, uh, it is our head of the year service. So we are going to be sharing what the Lord has given us for the coming uh, year. And uh, then I'll be sharing an overview, and then the ministers will be coming up and be sharing uh, specific points for the areas uh, that they were assigned. And I think it's going to give us some good direction for this year. Uh, how many of you know God did not call us to be wanderers? Right? Our, our wandering days were over years ago. We, we are not wanderers. We are purposed and advancing. Um, but for those of you who are not familiar with what we mean when we say head of the year, um, on the Hebraic calendar, they enter into a new year every Rosh Hashanah. And Rosh Hashanah this year was actually on Sunday, September 25th, and then it finished up Tuesday, September 27th. And uh, so we entered into the year 5783 on the Hebraic calendar. On this Sunday, which is October 9th, we uh, begin celebrating Sukkot, which is also known as the Feast of Tabernacles. And that ends on Sunday, October 16th at nightfall. This is a time in the uh, Old Testament when God would tabernacle with his people, come and dwell up, up among them. There are those, uh, especially in um, uh, Jewish tradition, that, that believe that it will be the, during the Feast of Tabernacles when the Messiah will come. And it may be, who knows? You know, no one knows the date, the time, or the hour uh, except the Father. But uh, that would be a good time when God dwells among his people. Uh, be a good time for Jesus to come back. Don't you think? But, but not this year. We've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> we need more time, God. <laughs> So one thing, I'm going to just kind of give a little bit of um, information about the year 5783. One of the things about the Jewish or Hebrew language is that you can literally read the year um, by virtue of uh, the numbers and the letters or the numbers that are um, represented by that year. So each year was rep is represented by a unique set of Hebrew letters, and they were originally pictograms. In the early days, they were pictograms. So 5700 can be translated, may it be the year of. May it be the year of. And then 80 is the word pay. P-E-I, and then three is Gimel. The year of Pei Gimel is what this year is. Now, when we talk about the word Pei, um, that represents the number 80, and that represents the decade that we're in, and that actually was, is a picture of a mouth, which for prophets and prophetic people is really great, right? We're entering, we have entered the, the decade of the mouth. And it represents words, expression, speech, and breath. Our words have power, and we know that, um, but it's time to make God's decrees and God's declarations, and it's time 
to walk in kingdom authority. Our words have power. We have to remember that. And as we think about the fact that we are in a decade of the mouth, that we need to guard our mouths and speak what heaven is saying, what God is saying, and make those decrees that align with what the word says. Amen? Amen. One of the verses for this season uh, or this decade is Deuteronomy 32, 1 through 3. And it says, give ear, O heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching drop as the rain and my speech distill as the dew, as raindrops on the tender herb and as showers on the grass. For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribing greatness to our God. Pay also represents a, pictures a face. The word for face is penin, which is a pay word. And God's face represents his presence. Um, <clears throat> I remember I was reading Robert Heidler, uh, who, who does a lot of, um, is an apostolic teacher at Glory of Zion. And he connected pay and Paim with Numbers 623, which was the Aaronic blessing. And it says, the Lord bless you and keep you, which means increase and protection. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. You know, when you see someone you love, your face lights up. Isn't that true? Well, you make God's face light up. And God takes great delight in you. That God would turn his face towards you. Judgment was when God would turn his face away from you. In Hosea 5.15 it says, I will turn away until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. So when God's face is turned towards you... There's nothing that he will withhold. So this is the year of pay, the year to seek God's face, to make a conscious choice to seek him. And the goal is to be close to God. And that num scripture in Numbers, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom, peace. And then it continues and says, so they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. You know, when we bless, that's why it's so important with uh, our words, especially in this time and season. When we bless those around us, we can literally put the name of God upon them and bless them. And that is uh, a wonderful thing to do. Then there's 80, and then there's 3. 57, 83. 3 is the word gemel. And it's used as the number 3. It's also the third um, letter of the Hebraic alphabet. But it also represents the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. Gamel in ancient Hebrew was also translated as camel. And camel, camels are the ships of the desert for kings and their riches. In 2 Chronicles 9.1, the queen of Sheba brought Solomon gold and gems and spices on a caravan of camels. And I was intrigued by by that, and so reading up on camels, we see that Eleazar brought the bride Rebecca home to Isaac on a caravan of camels, and he also took riches to those as he as he met Rebecca and and blessed her family. But kings and wealthy businessmen would use camels to transport goods along trade routes. 
And camel caravans were important to the economies of cities and empires. Um, camels are the best desert pack am animals because of they are amazingly strong. Camels are very, very strong. They can carry anywhere from 350 to 1,000 pounds each. And passengers can ride on top of them, ride in baskets on either side, and they can carry a lot of goods. Uh, camels can live on and digest thorny plants in the desert. They can survive many days without water because their body stores water and releases it as they are on their journey. And camels have calluses on their feet that protect them from scorching sand. And their eyelashes are very, very long and it protects them from the blinding um, sun and blowing sand in their eyes. They also possess an acute sense of smell. They can smell water and lead the entire group and, and caravan to it uh, out in the middle of the, the desert from very, very far away. So camels could take amazing loads of goods out across long journeys in the desert to get those goods to their intended destination. And this is the year of 5783. Look at somebody and say, your camels are on the way. Your camels are on the way. <laughs> the year of Pei Gamel. So, what revelation did the Lord give us for 5783? Well, there were a number of things that the Lord uh, laid on my heart as it related to this year. And I know that a number of, of national prophets have already released their word for the year. Um, and I have not listened to them yet because I wanted to, to just... Um, hear the Lord for, for myself and, and um, uh, you'd see what he was telling us here in Georgia about what is coming. So uh, one of the things is this is a year of Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is going to move mightily. There's going to be a release of power this year that is different from prior years, different from anything that we've seen. And there are going to be unusual manifestations this year of the Holy Spirit. So don't put him in a box. Amen? Sometimes, and this, this is a recurring theme, um, sometimes we get an expectation and kind of a sense of how Holy Spirit moves and we just kind of expect that move to happen. Well, get ready because it's going to be different. God's going to do some things this year that are going to be very, very different than, than what he has done before. And the anointing is making way for the glory. So we need to give place to the Holy Spirit in every sphere of our lives this year. <clears throat> now that doesn't sound revelational, except that that's what he's saying, is give me place in every sphere of your life. And that means personal time and communion corporate time in your churches, let him move this year. And every area of your life will be greatly transformed by the end of the year if you will do that. Amen. That's something to be excited about. I also felt strongly, I felt a warning not to grieve the Holy Spirit this year. 
that we need to be sensitive and conscious of him and our relationship with him. In Ephesians 4.30, it says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, divisions, and slander, along with every form of malice. And we're to take this to heart this year. Don't go into this new season with things in your life that grieve Holy Spirit. He will not be free to move in your life, in your circumstances, and around you the way that, that he wants to if we do that. So let's make a commitment to get rid of those things that grieve him. The next point is this is a year where change is going to be orchestrated. Um, it, there's going to be a lot of changes, and we're going to see some dramatic changes this year. And what the Lord kept talking to me about was springtime, 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 and that spring, that in the spring that there were going to be some new things springing up. <laughs> You know, that there were going to be, uh, that it was going to be a time of orchestrated change. And, you know, when he said that, I said, well, Lord, who's orchestrating the change? And he said, who is your God? I said, you are. He said, all right then. So God is orchestrating the change. If God is your God. Amen? If God is your God, he will be orchestrating the change. And I asked him about the areas in which there would be a, a change. And he said there's going to be a change in the economy. There's going to be a change in warfare. There's going to be a change in the presence of God. He said, my presence. And there's going to be governmental changes that are going to take place. And I really felt like some of the changes involve the church. And, and I know we've got um, one of our prophets, is, is a Prophet Eric, actually, is going to be um, talking about the word of the Lord for the church at large. But I really feel like this is a year of the ecclesia. I feel like the, that the Lord is going to be orchestrating change and that those that are in alignment with him are going to see great manifestations of the Holy Spirit, um, great advancement, not just in their ministries and churches, but outreaching into the communities, outreaching into the city, outreaching into the schools, outreaching into the mountains of influence around us. And that he's going to anoint those that are in alignment with him with that, to, with that anointing and grace to bring and orchestrate change. The next point is the Lord said, I am closing up the old wells. And um, you will not be able to access the anointing the same way you have in past years. There's a new way and new wells of anointing that he is opening up. And again, we've gotten too comfortable with how we access the anointing of God. And leaders, I'm speaking to you especially uh, and, and it's very easy to get into a place where we, we know how to pull on uh, the Spirit of God. We know how to draw from those wells. But God is saying, I am not going to let you take for granted my anointing and my presence. 
And so because of that, we're going to have to draw in a new way. We're going to have to be, learn how to work with Holy Spirit and to, to access these new wells of anointing and presence that he is going to be uh, opening up. Now, he's going to close off the old, but he's going to lead us into the new. He's not going to just close them off and leave them closed, right? So that's exciting because I believe those new wells are wells of, of uh, not only anointing, but I believe that miracles, I believe that signs and wonders, I believe that unusual manifestations of the Lord's presence, of the Holy Spirit, are going to be accessible to us and that we're going to access them this coming year as we follow the Holy Spirit and and are led to these new wells. The next point, he said, I'm filling in the pitfalls. And just like he's closing up the old wells, he's filling in the pits this year. Um, the places that have tripped you, the places that have entrapped you, delayed you, or hindered your advancement. If you seek him and obey his instructions this year, he will fill them in. And by the end of next year, there will be such great growth in the places that used to cause you to stumble. You won't even be able to tell they were there. And what I saw was I saw a picture of a road, and it was dusty, and it had, like, pits and ditches and, and just debris in the road. And, it, there was, you know, there was just hardly any way that you could walk down this road without tripping or stumbling, because, and you'd have to look down instead of looking up. And I saw that, what the Lord, it was like a before and an after. He showed me what the road for some looks like, and then he showed me uh, what it will look like as he fills in these pitfalls. And it was changed to a level field that had beautiful green, lush grass and flowers, and it was just, you couldn't even ever tell there was a pit or a ditch. And that is what he's making our pathways to be. Amen. The next point, he said it's a year of building bridges. And God wants us to build bridges between ministries, between businesses, between ministry and business, uh, between churches to build bridges to family members. This is a year that unity will be emphasized. In his house and between his houses, among his people and in our homes. Um, just like the camels, God wants us to caravan together. He wants that, that unity. And leaders deal with divisions this year. Don't let them fester. Um, an assignment this year that the enemy has against the, the, uh, the body of Christ is rebellion and division. So don't let the enemy have place in your house. Your spiritual house or your natural house. And I heard him say, if you will build the bridge... Even if they are not ready, you will have a peer from which I will bring provision and blessing. And what I saw was I saw a peer, like it was like a bridge being built over a divide, a body of water. And it got about three quarters of the way and it stopped. And then I saw the person go to the end of the pier and they cast their line and they pulled up almost like a big net of fish. And then they threw it back in again and they hooked onto a treasure chest. And so 
regardless of the response that you receive, if you will begin to build bridges, God will work it in your favor and for your good. And then when they are ready, it will be an easy transition for them to connect with you because you have already extended to build the bridge. The next point, I heard the Lord say, I am releasing angels of war. This is going to be a year of warfare. Um, we're going to have to learn how to war once again. Um, sometimes, you know, we have been in places where we have warred and we got tired, and so we sat down for a season. Sometimes God sat us down to rest. You know, that's not a bad thing. But, um, but we're going to need to know how to war this year because it is going to be a time of warfare. We'll war in praise and worship. We will war in intercession. We will war with declarations and decrees, and there will be new ways of warring revealed by my spirit, is what I heard the Lord say, that there are going to be new ways that he's going to teach his body to learn how to have victory against the onslaughts and the ways in which the enemy tries to hinder God's church from advancing. So he's going to reveal it to us as we enter in. But, and because of that, there is going to be a new sound that you're going to begin to hear in praise and worship. There's going to be a new sound that's going to begin to be released from heaven. And it's going to stir you. It's going to stir your spirit. Uh, it's going to prepare you uh, to enter in to war. Because, you know, the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. That is what the scripture says. And he is a warrior. And he goes before us in battle. And we are going to be a warring people. And some, some, some it's not your nature but it is your spirit's nature to war against the enemy and to war against the things that the enemy would send to try and hinder God's church from advancing in the earth. So um, get ready. It's going to be great. We're going to be victorious. We're going to be, you better get out your dancing shoes. You better get out your tambourines. You better get out your flags and your banners. Things that you said you'd never do, guess what? You're going to be doing it. And it's going to be great. And you're going to love it. And it's going to be exciting. It's gonna, you're going to feel the energema of God. You know, you're going to feel his presence. You're going to feel his, his anointing and grace because it's time for the church to advance. And God has a time frame and he is going to uh, make sure that the things that are needful for his time frame to be established and advancement to take place, he's going to make sure it happens. And I want to be on board. Do you want to be on board? Amen. That's right. <clears throat> so be prepared. But with that, he has released angels of war. And these angels, when you stand up to war, there are angels on assignment to war with you. He, they will war with your words. They will take your declarations and execute them. They will stand and defend your decrees against the enemy. And there is a whole angelic guard that has been released, not only over us, but over the nations and over the people uh, and his church. So get ready. It's going to be a great great, great year if we will enter into it and not retreat from it. Amen? 
The next point, my last point uh, for right now, I, I could go on, but my last point is this is going to be a year of redemption. There's going to be an opportunity to recover some things that have been lost over the last, and he highlighted to me five years. He said, stay in covenant with me and I will redeem them. So this is a year there will be opportunity to redeem lost time, lost inheritances, lost covenant relationships, and lost opportunities. And what, what he brought to mind was the book of Ruth. And I would encourage you to read the book of Ruth about how even though there was much loss, she went back and claimed her covenant inheritance and retrieved and recovered all that was thought to be long gone and lost, but God had a plan as she went forward with him and with Naomi uh, as they went and were obedient to do what, what they felt uh, that they were led to do. God restored the covenant promises, the, the inheritances, and brought her from a place of, of widowhood and mourning into fruitfulness and prosperity. So I want to encourage us that as this is a year of redemption, a year to recover lost things, that's a good reason to war. Amen? To war for our families, to war for our ministries, our businesses, to war over the souls of men and women who don't know uh, that there's another way besides what the world is showing them, uh, that these are reasons to go to war. And church, it's time for us to stand up and begin to decree, to declare, to co-labor with the angelic guard that God has released for this season, for this dispensation, and to see the redemption of those things that we thought were lost or gone coming back into our hands and into this church. Amen? Amen. It's going to be an eventful year, and I'm so excited about what the Holy Spirit's going to do to prepare us for the next advancement. One of the scriptures for the year is Isaiah 40, verse 10. It says, see, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and his arm rules for him. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. You see, he comes with power, and this is going to be a year that we're going to see the Lord's power demonstrated, and we're going to see his arm move, his reward, his recompense, his restoration, his redemption. We're going to see it this coming year. How many of you agree with that? <laughs> then let's give him some praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Oh! Woo! I'm excited, and I trust that you are too. It's going to be a great year. Um, so now we have our ministers that are going to be uh, sharing what the Lord has shown them for the coming year. And also even a word for the month of October. So if you will welcome, Liana Labiris is going to come and share what the Lord is saying in the area of family and relationships. So would you welcome Liana, please? evening everybody so I sought the Lord for the area of families and relationships for this year 
And what I heard was God is bringing freedom to families, restoring hope and love in families, giving beauty for ashes for lost identities, and specifically also for this month in families and relationships, the Lord is battling for destinies. So my sons and daughters, this is a year which I am bringing freedom to families. Even as you see the Statue of Liberty and how it represents um, freedom for the many immigrants that have come to my shores, so that there is a redemption which I am doing in the families that I have formed together because the enemy has tried to keep my families bound in even um, generational curses that have been passed from one family member to another. And it's not just um, curses of poverty and lack. There is also a curse of bad thinking in the family and the mindsets which have been passed from generation to generation. So I am doing a work from the inside out and in the hearts of my families, even the mothers and the fathers, they will begin to hear from me in a more revelatory level and they will be able to pass to their sons and daughters even new strategies for advancements because there is a legacy. There is a legacy which my families will leave in the earth and now is time for the fruitfulness to arise even um, the younger generation they will begin to operate in the spiritual gifts even as younger children and they will begin to even um, use their entrepreneurial giftings and their spiritual giftings they will walk in signs miracles and wonders and so no longer will the younger generations um, be um, put to the side or told, no, you're too young. Let's wait until you grow up. No, because I am bringing a move of my spirit to my families and they will be led by my spirit to operate in new ways, which has not been seen before. And I am restoring hope and love in families. My sons and daughters, there have been even as I mentioned, there have been generational um, thinking that has caused families to be diverted from my plan of love. There have been sibling rivalries. There have been dishonor to mothers and fathers, and they have not honored those. And because of that, yes, even as I said, if you honor your mother and father, that it may go well with you and you live a long life. Some um, people have, in my family have not taken advantage of my promise to bless and extend your life, but I am restoring honor to the elders, and I am bringing back um, those prodigals that have been distanced from my families, and they will begin to say, you know what, um, I need to respect those in authority, and it will come from a heart place. It will not come from like a force. It will not come from an outside measure, but it will become because I am changing their heart. Even those that are in the prison, um, those family members of yours who are in prison and um, who are like literally in prison and also locked up spiritually in prison. I am bringing release to them. I am working on their heart. So do not give up the prayers that you have been praying for your loved ones, even those who are locked in prison. But I am also giving beauty for ashes, for the lost identities. I am... I am bringing those, that generational wealth, which was spoken about. There, there is great destinies that I have for my families, but they have not taken advantage of um, the legacy that I have called them to. And even as has been spoken about the grass being pushed back and the, the pits being filled in, yes, I am coming to raise those things which are, are the roots which keep people stumbling and keep them in the, in the jungle, so to speak. I am resetting you to the original plan that I had at the beginning for you to prosper. And I am bringing new tools for generational wealth that you will each pass on to each other generation, um, that there will be an increase with each generation. Rather than a decrease, there will be an increase and there will be a multiplication so that you can sit, you look back and say, Yes, we went far, farther than my mother and my father, but there will not be any pride in it. It will just be so that you can do more for my kingdom and so that you can advance more of my kingdom in this earth. And even this month, in families and relationships, I am battling for destinies. The enemy would like to keep you bound. The enemy would like to keep you um, blocked and bring division 
in the relationships. It is important, my sons and daughters, that you stay in peace. The enemy would try to get you to divert and try to disconnect from some of your covenant relationships this month. So I am putting you on guard this month to be in peace and be led by my spirit. Do not disconnect from those that I have called to pour into your life and to equip you and empower you to go to the next level. And the same measure, do not be so quick to connect with those that look good on the outside. But I know the end and I know the beginning for each person. And there are very strategic partners that I have for you, your destiny helpers, for you to be able to connect with them in order to fulfill all that I have for each of you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Leanna. Praise the Lord. He's battling for destinies, and the Lord wins his battles, doesn't he? Amen, amen, amen. Well, next we get to hear from Amy Granger, who is going to share what the Lord is saying in the area of business and economy. So would you welcome Amy as she comes to share. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, when you uh, cut out a few carbs, you got to watch it when you look down. <laughs> you might need an assist up the stairs. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, so th the first point that the Lord gave me for this year is that it is going to be a year of economic turbulence. And I saw um, an eagle with like the sludge of oil on its wings. And that represents deception and um, things that are being done against God's people in the economy and against the world in the economy. That was that black sludge. Um, but the Lord also showed me an airplane and there was turbulence. And I heard a voice from the pilot on the airplane saying, fasten your seat belts. But we're also to remember who is the pilot, that God is in control. And the Lord says, I am shaking some things in the economy. I am doing the shaking. And so in the economy, um, the, the Lord wants to shake some things out. And the shaking is going to help unify the people, because there is going to be a warfare that is going to bring a change in economic policy that's going to come through um, the voting and this shaking is going to bring prosperity but there has to be the shaking in order for us to get through the turbulence and for things to be better so hang on and the lord says go with my flow in the shaking and do not align with what is being said on the news so we're to co-labor with God during the time of shaking and not focus on the shaking, but keep our eyes on him because he is doing the shaking. The second point that I got for this year is that we're to walk in the Joshua and Caleb anointing, pursue prosperity and abundance according to God's principles. This is a year to be a faithful tither. Um, do not align with the news, which is cultivating fear and anxiety, um, fear of lack and a poverty mentality. But this is a time to seek clarity and next steps from the Lord for your assignment. This is a year of creating wealth to advance the kingdom and to demonstrate God's faithfulness in the world because the world is watching. New businesses will be birthed for these times. So 
give the Holy Spirit room to download fresh ideas. This, this, um, this month, um, what I heard the Lord say was, it's a time to finish strong those things that were given for last year and start strong. So finish that book. Start what needs to start. So be generous. Be someone's miracle. Hire someone. Give someone employment. Demonstrate faith for increase. Um, and then the second point for this month, um, the Lord said, look for and ask for opportunity. So talk to people. Um, look for divine connections. Close the door to fear and doubt and, um, and see blessings come in like a rain cloud. Um, in this time, the enemy wants to cloud over our vision with um, fear and doubt and dread about what is coming around the corner. What is next week going to be like? What's tomorrow going to be like? What is next year going to be like? The Lord says we are the Joshua and Caleb generation. We are to go in and possess the land and to align with him and to look for that, that rain cloud. Um, like you see the rain coming, you know, just keep looking for that rain cloud because as we position and align ourselves with God, we're going to see economic um, prosperity and blessing. Amen. Hope you're taking notes. And next we have Daryl Spearman is going to be sharing what the Lord is saying in the area of nations and governments. So would you welcome <laughs> Daryl, please? Amen, amen, hallelujah, because God is good yes. and he is faithful. Yes. Aren't you grateful? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm grateful because he's good. Oh, my goodness. So as I was seeking God about uh, the year for the nations and government, um, I may have a couple of things that stumble slightly in other people's areas. Please forgive me. Um, the first thing, one of, one of the things I got was the UK having people raised up to be true heroes or leaders. Um, two, some nations sort of comparable to India um, will hold less U.S. currency in dollars. Um, third, there's a refiner's fire coming to Brazil, and technology and medicine will come out of that nation. Another word that was, it was sort of became a theme, but it was an interesting one, was there is a battling of thrones. It was called the Battle of the Thrones. And uh, the Lord highlighted a, a particular time, um, March and April. So I heard, when I heard Battle of the Thrones, I heard, heard sort of saw March. And when it came to the April piece, it was connected to this dream that I had where I saw people in this community and they're all wearing red. And I see on their, uh, sort of like on their sleeves of their shirts, it said Somerset Community. And then I began to see people, gang members <laughs> of different gangs, like I mean, I saw red bandana, blue, black, different colors, but none of them were fighting. And a person, I saw a person uh, that was sort of with this group that I'm with, he started passing them out like a flyer. And as I looked, I saw a sign that had like an Easter Bunny and there are plenty of people in the community. And it was, I, I could tell it was a mission event. And so um, the Lord is doing something on outreach and evangelism near the time of the resurrection. I don't think it's limited to that, but I think there's just a pouring out of outreach as well. And I, I did hear Georgia, Georgia revival fires as well um, at another point in time. Um, the next thing sort of blend in for this month. Um, so 
We're to pray for Daniels that are able to navigate in perverse places. And I feel like whether we are the leaders or not, we should be more like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because I heard the enemy say something. And it was, it's time to select the high priestess. And that showed that there's an agenda of the enemy to put in place perverse leaders, um, not just this month, but even moving forward this year. And I heard God say that he wanted to do something, which was God is dealing with the idols that are set up, and he's allowing some governmental policies to fail. And um, there's some things even in housing projects where there's sort of uptick of pr housing projects not finished. And maybe the Lord is uh, bringing some opportunity to that, but I just saw, I saw unfinished housing, and um, that was it. So Sons and daughters, I am shaking the nations and I'm moving yet in your midst for I've designed and set up even my own heroes, those that I've placed in them my power to be able to lead their nations well. Even in the UK, watch as I've, I've raised up leaders to begin to take place and to begin to move things forward. And even with America, know that there are some policies that I'm going to cause to begin to fail and to fall short of what they thought it would be to begin to confu confuse even the wise and uh, part of that will even be where there's a shift even with the U.S. dollar um, being held as currency in different nations around the earth but do not fear for I do have my opportunities and things set up to prosper my people for know that I'm bringing a refiner's fire to my children that will bring cleansing healing and deliverance for I'm even bringing deliverance cleansing uh, to Brazil for I even know the festivals and things that they've set up that have been against me but yet I am pouring out my spirit on that nation and there will be new technology and medicine that will begin to come out from that nation and even from them there will be leaders that are developed and groomed to begin to take back the communities and the, the major cities where there will be a move, move of my spirit and of my power that follows and yes there is a battle of the thrones where the enemy would like to set up his throne and set up his agenda and set up his people but I am causing those things that he's pushed forward to, to push forward to prevail to fail and even with the policies I'm bringing a, a destruction to certain policies to bring reformation to policies even along the border even in New York City I'm bringing transformation that will come by my hand and my by my power my spirit for there's a cry even of the people on the inside that will be expressed on the outside but as my people be begin to pray, you'll begin to see a, 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 a wave and a change and transformation to the people um, whose hearts are heavy and broken by society and by a failed policy. And even in communities where there are gang members, um, where, where there's uh, just a lot of distraughtness, even at the local level, I'm bringing revival fires of outreach that will bring in my glory into communities that was once broken to where now you will begin to even see a sign and a miracle of unity um, being present where I've transformed lives. So even as you are open to my heart, and what it is that I'm doing, I'll begin to use you and the church at large to begin to move and to flow in different cities, places, and spaces for even the Georgia Revival fires. And I'm calling for prayer for the leaders like Daniel and those that will rise up like Shadrachs, Meshachs, and Abednegoes for this, for this society, for America that will stand strong and bold despite, uh, despite what comes up, despite the threats, despite the, the chaos of everything that's going on. People that will be yielded to my spirit and my power and that will pray and do warfare against what the enemy would like to set up through perverse leaders. And so as my body begins to pray, I will begin to cast down idols and I'll begin to bring low things that were resurrected to keep me out of society. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. He is the God of the nations. Amen. 
Amen. And last but not least, we have Prophet Eric Etheridge, who's going to come and share what the Lord is saying to the church at large. Would you welcome Prophet Eric, please? Amen, amen. Can you guys hear me? All right, so my assignment was the, the church at large. And um, uh, he gave me, a, 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 I just couldn't get Isaiah 60 out of my spirit, so that was one of the scriptures. And uh, 2 Kings uh, uh, 4, 1 through 7, uh, when the widow, um, when uh, Elijah gave widow the, the, uh, the widow, one of the prophets, the, the strategy to pour oil. And, and I just saw oil being poured into vessel after vessel after vessel. And so it just saw oil pour. And then also last, last, um, last week, um, I had a dream. I had a dream. And there was, a, there was, it was the plane and the plane was on a short runway, and the plane took off. And God was saying, that this is the church. It, you're on a runway, and it's about to take off with a new trajectory. And God, they just, it was just going up. But then as I, I was on the plane, and as I looked down, there were many more planes that were lined up, ready to take off. So God was saying that, that not only is the church rising, but there's many more that are connected. And it's going to be a, almost like a train or a line of trains, which is the church that's being taken off to a new heights and to just a greater depths. And then, so with that being said, um, the thing that... Uh, gave to me was this. He said, this is a year that I am bringing restoration to the church. So I'm bringing restoration to the church. Amen. He said, and all, the second thing he gave me, he said, this is the year that I'm bringing my church together. He says that, that Judah, Zebulon, and Issachar are in proper formation for a battle. Amen. Amen. Then for this month, he said that the church is in the starting blocks, ready to be established. Amen. So it said, sons and daughters, this is the year that I am bringing restoration to the church. And I'm causing all the plans and all, all the things that have been lined up over the past years to be restored and to come to fruition. For it's been times where it's been held up, but the time is over. And it's now time to establish those plans. And you will begin to see that even as those plans are beginning to be established, there's going to be such a move of me that's going to cause things to be as subtly. For it's going to be a quick work and it won't delay any longer. For I'm even causing for those to even... And move in such advancements and move forth that you will begin to see that there will be doors that will be flung open and that there will be new opportunities for this is a time where I'm even causing my church and causing my people to walk into new open doors for there is promotion and there will be things where you'll begin to see that where it seems like it's been held up that those things will begin to be flung open but even as those things begin to flung open you will begin to walk through the doors and you will walk through the doors with, with great excitement for the church I'm even causing you to move at a greater excitement at a greater joy and you will begin to see that there are yet spoils on the other side of the door and as you begin to move on and through the doors you'll begin to see that there's some old things that will be closed behind you because you cannot take some of the old things into the new thing into the new season for this is a new season a new time there's a new change and no matter what the climate is no matter how it looks even in the natural you will begin to see that the church will continue to advance will continue to even and rise up over the darkness even as the gross darkness comes upon the earth and darkness comes upon the people I will cause my church to shine bright at this time you will be the ones that will almost be like the shiny ones that no matter what the situation is you will always be the ones that will rise upon uh, 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 rise upon the earth and you will be the one that will walk in the area of prosperity for I have laid my hands upon you I have laid my glory upon you and you will be like Goshen even in the midst of times where Egypt is falling where it looks like like the sky is falling, my people and my church will always be ones that will be in the forefront and understand that I will take care of you and that my hand is upon you. Amen. Yes. But God said that there's even much more that I will continue to yet pour out. He said, as much as you pour out, I will pour back into you. As I will even begin to fill up those vessels from even sending vessels to the church who are ready and willing. And as these vessels come in and out, I'm going to pour the anointing. I'm going to pour my glory upon those vessels. And you will begin to see that even as these vessels begin to come in, you will begin to see that where there's been yokes and bondages that have even held the, the church in, in place, there's even been 
been there's governmental officials that have tried to hold the church down but because of the anointing because of their vessels and because of what I'm even doing with inside of them they will rise up and they will have a voice and begin to speak against those things they will begin to speak this year against some of the injustice they will begin to speak and say that no that is not right you cannot hold the church down nor can you hold the church back because this anointing will cause them to be one that will begin to break out of bondage and break out of the staleness of the past because these are my mighty vessels that I even calls and raising them up for a, such a time as this and there will be ones that will that will be coming from the outside it's going to be people that you've never thought because I'm even beginning to work in their hearts now people who, who who've been watching from the outside but they've been pondering what the church is doing and what I am doing but it's now time for them to come in to even step in to do what I have for them to do and they will have such a bonus that they won't they will not shy back but they will be ones that will go forth and they will speak with boldness and they will not uh, be ones that will be uh, uh, almost uh, timid because there's going to be some bold ones and God said that I'm also causing the church to be fat again they will be faithful and they will be available and teachable for I'm even moving some of uh, there's going to be even a change where there's individuals who, 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 who will be moved out who are not uh, faithful who are not available and not teachable they will be put to the side but those individuals who have a humble spirit those who are individuals who are ready to move and do what I call for them to do they will begin to step into place and I will begin to use them in unusual ways and they were going to be my living demonstrations in the earth realm Amen. So know that also that this is a year that I'm even bringing things together. I'm bringing Judah, Zebulon, and Issachar uh, together. For there's a true anointing and a great formation that I'm even bringing upon my people where the praise will go forth. And it, because of the, and in and through this praise, you will begin to see that the resources will begin to come and they will begin to open up for them. Even open up my treasure chest of heaven that will begin to drop because of the worship. And also will give the church the strategies to do and to help and to deal deal with uh, uh, and to proper steward the resources that are coming in so you will begin to see that there's a mighty uh, mighty formation between uh, uh, between between my, 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 my tribes if you will and you will begin to also see that this is a time where the five-fold ministry will begin to come together at a greater unity and they will begin to function more and they will begin to function more uh, in line than they have been in the past and I will also cause my saints my saints will begin to rise up and my saints will begin to move with a more uh, 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 effective power. They're going to be move with a, a greater boldness and a greater anointing even in the marketplace. They're going to have a greater voice. They're going to begin to deal with the darkness at this time. For I understand that I'm even uh, orchestrated this time for them and this is where you'll see them come forth. For I'm also launching mighty voices also in the areas of arts and entertainments and into education. God says that I'm going to launch them like a spear into those areas and they will begin to deal with the darkness and they'll begin to deal with the deception in those areas and they will speak up and they will cause our area to, and those mountains to be changed for my glory for my righteousness for I'm beginning to restore and redeem those mountains and I'm also causing the militaristic prophets to rise up those firepower prophets to rise up at this hour they will begin to rise up and they will begin to speak and deal with witchcraft they will begin to deal with darkness and they will be the ones that will bring forth deliverance in the church and bring forth the deliverance deliverance at this hour for they will begin to be the ones that I have called to be almost Elijah for there is a showdown that's going to happen this year and I'm beginning to reclaim that what has been lost and it's now time for those things to be redeemed and even as, as the power prophets begin to rise up to deal with the darkness I'm also going to cause the seers to see even more clearly they won't be ones that will just see and gaze to what, uh, what is being done in the heavens but not only they will begin to be the ones that will also see and they will also begin to be ones that will proclaim for uh, they will be ones that will not hold their tongue at this hour but they will be ones that will stand on the wall and declare my purposes and declare my vision and it will declare what I'm doing at this hour for they will not be held shut because this is a time that even as I'm beginning to deal with the seers I'm even also touching the area even of worship this worship will come forth and it's going to be a fresh worship with new intensity a new period praise that will come forth that will crack the atmosphere because it's going to be such a sound that's going to be so piercing that it's even going to break down every barrier it's going to break down yet the darkness in this area and that you will find that the atmosphere will begin to change even in worship it will begin to change in the church it will begin to even change as
as you go forth because you're going to be the ones that carry the worship out into the marketplace and people will come to your light they will come to the worship they will come to the glory because it's going to be such a glory that stays upon you that it's not just going to be time at times of worship in the temple but it's going to be times that will come upon you that you will find that there's going to be a new experience in your personal worship and in corporate worship and because of that you will begin to see that the miracles and the signs and the wonders will begin to break out at my services it will begin to break out in worship it will bend in the mouth of my people and as they begin to speak it as you begin to declare it you're going to see the miracle signs and wonders that begin to break out but it's also going to be on on the on the rim that those individuals who contend for it those are the individuals who begin to step out for it you will begin to see that I will begin to do a new things at this new hour, at this new time, and understand that even this month, the church is in the starting block, and I'm beginning to establish you. So get ready to be established at this time in this month, because I'm setting you up for the rest of the year. And so church, get ready and be willing and to be able and allow me to change and set you up for prosperity in this time and in this season. Hallelujah. How many of you are excited about what God is doing? Woo! That is so good. Well, you know, we, we believe in making declarations to align with heaven, to uh, align our words and our, our uh, just the, the decrees that we make uh, to align them with what God is saying. So if you will stand with us and we're going to make some decrees uh, for the coming year. So we'll start in the order that we that we um, ministered. So Leanna is going to lead us first. Amen. 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 All right. So please repeat after me. We declare, we declare this, year, this year we will align with God, align with God in bringing freedom, in bringing freedom and restoration of hope and love, and love in families. In families. We, declare we declare this year, this year that, lost that lost identities and inheritances, and inheritances are, being are being redeemed. We declare, we declare this, month, this month we choose to follow God, to follow God as, he as he battles for destinies. For destinies. We will stay in peace. In our, in our relationships. Amen, in Jesus' name. We declare, we declare that we believe you are in control, God, through economic seasons, and we will trust you and align with your plans and purposes. We will, align with you we will align with you for kingdom advancement and prosperity. We will finish strong and pursue opportunities in business to advance the kingdom. We declare, we declare the Lord's kingdom will be, will be established in the nations, in the nations and, with and with their leaders. We declare, we declare the, anointing the anointing will be present, will be present to, evangelize, to evangelize and it will fill our lives and, it will fill our, lives and our churches. And our churches. We, declare we declare that anointed leaders that, anointed leaders that are able to navigate, perversion, to navigate perversion, our feeling, our, feeling, our, nation. our nation. We declare, we declare that, this year, that this year, the church, the church will, have will have restoration and be restored. And be restored. We, will we will be faithful, be faithful available, available and, teachable. and teachable. We will advance. And walk through the doors, walk through the doors of, opportunity. of opportunity. This year, this year the, fivefold ministry the fivefold ministry 
will come together, we'll come together at, a unity, at a greater unity and the worship, and the worship will, go forth, will go forth and pierce the atmosphere, and pierce the atmosphere to, bring to bring miracles, miracles signs, signs, wonders, wonders and, the and the power of God. We declare, we declare that this month, that this month the, church the church is in the starting block, the starting block. Ready, to ready to go for promotion. And advancement. and advancement. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We declare, we declare that, this year, that this year I will not grieve, will not grieve the, Holy the Holy Spirit, but I will follow you, God, follow you, God. Wherever, you wherever you lead. I will be, I will be your, warrior. your warrior. I will war. I will and I will win because you are the victor. I decree that this year that the pits will be filled in and I will not stumble, be delayed, hindered, or entrapped, but I will advance in the destiny you have for me. I declare that my city, my nation, my home, my church will be covered by the Holy Spirit. And we will follow you, God, wherever you lead. Prepare my heart to go where you lead, knowing that it will be redeemed and I will recover those things lost and will give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in Jesus' name. If you believe that, let's give him some praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.